Okay, these are the 3D printed parts that we are going to use in order to build this massive and hopefully really fast 3D printed RC boat. And instead of using motors and propellers above the water, we are now going to equip this with a motor that runs a water propeller and see if that works any better. But first we have to put it together, so let's do that next. So I prepped the parts, but first I had to use my computer in order to 4D print the part which is 7000% faster than normal 3D printing. Each piece is about 600 grams of PLA plastic and a total of 100 hours of printing, but divided on multiple printers, so it wasn't too bad. This combination of activator and super glue worked really well and you'll see me use it throughout the entire video. It's as tall as I am, if not taller. Sheer size of it is insane. I didn't anticipate it to be this large, but once the spontoons, whatever they are called, comes onto the side, it's gonna be even taller. You can also 4D print pure carbon fiber, which is awesome. Okay, the next step would be to join these spoons onto the side with the main hole using carbon fiber tubes. You just need to cut this long piece of tubing. There we go. That's actually perfect. And that will go through the main hole. It doesn't quite align, dude. When in doubt, fire torch. Lovely. Woo! Massive! Jesus! That looks incredible. So I've actually not quite figured out I haven't quite figured out how to power this yet. It might be an air propeller. I would honestly rather do some kind of water propeller in the back. Maybe, maybe two motors would be sufficient. I don't know. I'll, I'll see what I have at home. It really depends on what I have in my drawers. So at this point I brought it outside and sealed exposed seams that would be underwater to secure it even more. But to protect the PLA I decided to try something new. All up in this, I decided to switch from water propeller to air propeller once again, but instead of three motors like last time, I want to build it with eight. But first we have to paint it. I'm using a paint called Alkid, a bit unorthodox, but it gets the job done. All right, let's flip it and do the bottom side. In this box, we have the entire power system for the boat. Perspective is key. This motor is actually tiny. But I have eight of these motors and each one is capable of producing 1.8 kilograms of thrust. Believe it or not, but this is a 4-in-1 EC capable of running four independent motors. On each output, it can deliver 65 amps. The motors are from Nord FPV. Check them out in the description below. Now there is a whole lot of soldering that's gonna have to happen to connect the motors to the ECs and after that I'll show you how we're supposed to mount them on the boat. Alright, I've extended the cables on all the motors and I've also 3D printed the motor mounts. And here they are, they are quite complex shaped and so they failed unfortunately. So what I've done is I've I printed the remaining part that I'll super glue on top of them to uh, finish them up. But here's what they look like. There is no integrated BEC, basically a small circuit that provides power to the receiver. So I'm leeching that 5 volt supply from this speed controller, so that's what that's for. Now I'm about to test if my system works, but only one motor spins up, which tells me that the two electric speed controllers aren't talking to each other. You have no idea how fucking relieved I am. I had to connect the ground to one of the ECs, but not the other.
Let's clear off the pinch and put on this motor mount. Okay, let's get these motors up. They're gonna look great. I'm hyped. Imagine this on each motor. Just imagine it. Gee! Sick. There are three times eight cables running from the motors, so I fastened every single one and now it was time to test the motors running, but this happened. Nay! Okay, as you know, for the past year I've sent numerous files to PCBWay in order to be either CNC'd or metal 3D printed. All you do is upload your file and it will provide you with a plethora of options in regards to materials to choose from. PCBWay also offers PCB manufacturing and with their instant quote feature you'll get the pricing up front. My experience is that you'll have your new part just a week after placing the order, so check them out in the description below. Okay. Back to the video. I, I didn't expect it to still work after that short circuit, but it does, which is insane. It seems like the battery connector was the issue, not the EEC itself, but I'm pretty sure I saw some sparks flying through the EEC, so the fact that it still works is crazy. Now I've linked up all the motors, I'm gonna test all eight of them for the first time and hopefully there's not gonna be any sparks, so let's test it. With everything working, I salvaged a servo from an old RC car and put a rudder on it so that we could test it in the water for the very first time. This is Rickard, he built the exact same boat but with a gas motor and here's what it sounds like. At this point I lost all faith in my 10 gram electric motors. So we prepped our boats to see which one would be faster. We were driving side by side but all of a sudden Rickard's boat decided to flip. It may have been due to a much higher center of gravity. <laughs> but I did get to test it after some repairs and it was awesome. I mean, you know, I guess it was okay. So something actually did happen with the EEC when sparks flew through it, you know, crazy times. So only 7 out of the 8 motors was working, but I wasn't too happy with the speed. So what I'm gonna do is add 2 additional motors to the pontoons and see if that helps. So what I'm doing now is routing wires, so because the motors are gonna be mounted on the pontoon and face backwards. The theoretical thrust with 10 motors should be 16 kilograms on 6 cell and 5 inch propellers. Okay, check this out. This is the new improved setup that I'm running. Two individual ECs going to each motor up front. I have a third EC going to one of the motors in the rear as one of the outputs on the 4-in-1 EC failed. But the 4-in-1 ECs are still running 7 out of 8 motors in the rear. That's the setup. Here's the batteries. Don't take these into an airport. I think it might be a little heavy with the 360 camera, so I'm gonna remove it. Let's try it again. Better, much better. It's just not as sluggish as it was before. The acceleration is actually decent and the top speed, I mean look at this, it's great. I've lost all control. The boat is 
out there. I've lost all control. The boat is just going and it's going to crash into the small island any second. Is it not going to hit it? Oh, it hit. It hit. I can't do anything. Okay, I'm in the middle of the lake, but I got it. But it was burning pretty bad. Yikes. Um, it's not as bad as it seems. It's way worse. It, it ruined everything inside the boat except the batteries, which I'm grateful for. I would very much appreciate if you could leave a like. It tends to make the videos more popular. So thank you very much for that. See you again next time. Bye.